This is my Zenith Transoceanic R600 chassis. I picked up the radio at a local thrift store for about $49. When I got it, the cord reel was missing, but the line cord was in the back. So I thought, well, maybe I could just take it home and hook it up and uh, with alligator clips and it will work. But it, it did not work. So I took the chassis out and I was fishing around in there and I found that somebody had already bypassed the selenium rectifier with a diode to the power resistor and then this goes to pin 2 of the 50A1 tube. Right now it's on 6120. It doesn't exactly show it there because it's probably out of the line. It's alignment is a little bit off. There's no antenna on it and it's picking up a shortwave station here at night. So what I did was um, I took a diode and a couple of resistors and hooked them together, together with alligator clips to the pin 2 of the 50A1 tube and I got um, well it's working you can hear it and the meter went off I'm trying to get the voltage now got 113 volts it says it should be 105 it smells a little funky don't want to leave that on too long so I will turn it off and uh, I'll flip it over and I'll show you uh, what I was talking about where this uh, burnt up component was. Okay, I got it flipped over. And this is the selenium rectifier. The person left it in there. This is where the 120 volt lead where I cut, cut it off with the diode. And this is pin two of the 50A1 tube. So this component was in there, but for some reason it had zero volts at the end of it. And the, the guy told me that this uh, board will take the place of that power resistor too. And there's some other components. I haven't read the manual yet. So this is uh, supposedly going to sit right about here from what I remember seeing on eBay. And then uh, I'll go through and uh, replace some of these uh, beat up old capacitors. Just for the heck of it. It works, but... I wanted to go right through it and uh, bring it back to life. So I will get the instructions out and uh, start on that. One thing I forgot to mention was I did find a cord reel on eBay. So I'll be installing that as well. And uh, looks like it might be a little tricky, but we'll get it in there. Okay, I'm moving along here through the install and it uh, occurred to me I didn't really show you what was uh, in the package. In the package were uh, eight wires pre-cut in specific colors and uh, the ends are stripped to a specific length. There's a hardware mounting kit and there's the filter pack board. Over here is the different Hayseed Hamfest capacitor kit. Um, some detailed instructions about where to put the wires and a nice color picture diagram of where to put the wires. So I have four of them in there. The blue, the white, the yellow, the black, and the gray. So in the instructions it says to mount them to the components first and then to the board last. And the board is marked uh, with the colors uh, right along the bottom there. I can't get it to focus, but the colors are marked for those little through holes. And then uh, the wires are uh, lo lo cut longer or stripped longer at one end than the other end. So the longer end goes into the radio component and the shorter end goes into the circuit board. So I'm going to keep uh, putting in the wires. Oh, it had me pull out some wires. I would have shown you those, but I put them in a box. Uh, I'm going to keep putting in the re remaining wires and then uh, wire it up to the circuit board. Okay, I have all of the 
wires installed from the filter pack kit. Um, it had me take out a capacitor. This uh, 12 microfarad capacitor. And it had me wire up something to another capacitor. So I thought it would be a good time to install the capacitor that it had me wire stuff up to. Uh, my goal is to actually install the filter kit first and test the radio before I go on to uh, changing every single capacitor in here. But I went ahead and did that one. And I might do this one. Because the uh, circuit board is going to sit here. And it might be hard to change. So I might go ahead and do that one and get that one out of the way. Um, so here's the uh, capacitor I removed because I had to wire something up to it. Here's three wires that, um, there was a third one here a minute ago. Oh, it rolled off onto the floor that uh, I was told to remove. Here's the tube I won't need anymore. Here's a mounting stud, I guess, if you don't want to mount it to the uh, selenium rectifier. There are these three jumper wires in there. I actually wound up using one of them. I used the red one. It, it doesn't really say what the, in the directions what they're for. But if you look here from the on off switch to the 3V4, there's a little red jumper. And I realized I didn't, after what I did everything they said, I did not have that connection. So I used that jumper. So uh, hopefully that's wired right. So I'll go ahead and uh, mount the circuit board and start soldering the wires into the circuit board. Okay, look at that. The circuit board is in and all the wires are soldered into the little holes. I had a little trouble with a couple of them. One of them broke at the component end while I was uh, putting it in and I had to quickly strip off the end of it. Uh, but it's in there. So now I'm going to hook up my uh, alligator leads to the power and uh, we'll do the smoke test. Okay. Got the alligator leads hooked up to the power. Here's the plug. Plug it in. Turn it on. Oh wow, look at that. I did it right. There's a station in there. That's the one I had on the other night. There's no antenna on it. try hooking an antenna onto it see if that works better by the way I did replace that capacitor close to the board just to get it out of the way and uh, next I'll go through and do the others first I want to make sure that uh, the audio sounds clear I'll find a good station and uh, make sure the audio sounds clear on the station okay I hooked up to a, a wire antenna running around the basement the auto sounds good. A little bit of squeal in the background, but I'm very happy with the way it came out. So now I'll move on to replacing the other capacitors one at a time. And uh, then maybe onto an alignment. Okay, I've got several of them in, and I'm getting tired, so I'm going to call it a night. Some of these uh, capacitors are the color-coded type, and I had to get out a color code chart and make sure I don't mess that up. The ones that are printed the, with the value on them are easy. And I didn't go over how I, uh, how I install these. I cut the uh, capacitor leads right off at the... Uh, right at the capacitor and I leave the leads in the radio and then what I do we'll use this for an example um, I make a loop on the old lead and a loop on the new lead and crush them as best I can then solder it and then I cut off the excess and that's what I do all throughout this some of these were buried way down in there because I have fat fingers and I have fat tools um, I bought them up a little higher and I'll just make sure they don't touch anything before I uh, finish all this up. 
but uh, most of them are in there. One thing I, I didn't mention earlier was on the can capacitor. The can, can capacitor has been changed before. I can tell because there's writing on it. There's print on it. That, that It's modern print. So somebody changed it. And what they did was they snipped the tab off the old one and they just soldered it to the new tab. And that made things a little challenging trying to uh, get it apart and uh, solder the wires the way it needed to be. But, but it worked out. All right, to assist me, uh, I got a printout, uh, I think this is from Bama.edu, a printout of the uh, L600, which is electrically similar to this R600. And this is a map of all the capacitors. And I've highlighted the one that, ones I've done. And then um, in small uh, print here, I put down the values of the ones remaining. And I got that from this other side, this chart. You, I've highlighted the ones I've done on this side too. Uh, the only thing that's a mystery is uh, there's a question mark here by C16. Um, there's nothing on here marked C16. And I'm not going to worry too much about it. Um, if I have one leftover capacitor, I do. And speaking of leftover capacitors, uh, this is the 12 microfarad uh, replacement for the one that had me pull out and remove, which is that one. So to just remove it. So I'm going to have this as an extra one. Maybe I can use it in another radio. But if you ever uh, go to do what I did and you get the uh, the fil filter pack kit from uh, eBay and then the capacitor kit from Hastings Hamfest minus the can capacitor, I got all that for $9. Um, you might tell them you don't need the 12 uh, microfarad electrolytic and maybe you'll save some, save, some, save some more money. So now that I have this map, which was very handy, by the way, because there was one I couldn't uh, find until I used the map. It's uh, way the heck down in there. Let me get my little pointer. It's way down there. You can't even see it with the camera, but I can see it with my eye. I don't know how I'm going to get that out of there, but I'll give it uh, I'll give it a try. So I'll do a few more and then come back. Try to recruit them and violating FBI. <laughs> like this is, it's, it's a little dicey to be with that when that happens. Yeah, right. it's, it's the... All right, I got all the capacitors in. I even found R16. Here's R16 right there, that uh, little yellow one. I didn't uh, print out all the pages and bring it over here with me when I was uh, when I had that other map out of all the capacitors. Uh, the uh, calibration's a little off, but I'll do an alignment. And I'll just show you here. This are the parts that came out with the filter pack. Um, I did not mount it, the uh, filter pack to the selenium rectifier. It just didn't seem to fit in there that well. And these are the 15 capacitors that came out with the Hayseed Hamfest kit. This is the leftover capacitor that uh, was this capacitor. So, um, came out pretty good. I'm going to uh, play with it on... Uh, the shortwave bands real quick while well, I've been playing with it and I'm going to play with it some more and then uh, I'll set up an equipment and uh, do an alignment. I got to mention I did install, install the cord reel when I got on uh, eBay. I used some uh, heat shrink tubing here and here to uh, keep it nice and neat. I went out and bought a kit at uh, AutoZone of all places. Of, uh, Quite a bit of a heat shrink tubing. I won't open it up, but there's several sizes in there of heat shrink tubing. I kind of wish I had bought that before I did the uh, capacitors because there were a couple of leads in there I would have liked to uh, cover it up. One of them had a cloth covering on it, and the cloth covering broke when I tried to pull it over a burr. It just tore. So, uh, but I'll have that for uh, next time if there is a next time. And the green lead here, by the way, is just to make the speaker work since I unhooked the wires that go down to the uh, headphone connector so just so you know the two that seem to do it are the two outside leads in case you pull yours out and you want it to work and uh, I'll show you the, the filter capacitor you can see in there there's a sticker on the filter capacitor so it's been changed once before sorry about that it's been changed once before and uh, 
wonder if I could almost take it out and use it in another R600. But then it won't look uh, anywhere near original. And here's one last shot at the bottom showing all 15 capacitors replaced, all those yellow ones, including the hard to reach ones down there, down there. Can't even see them, but they're in there. So it came out really good. Some uh, French amateurs on the uh, 80 meter band. I'm on uh, this band here and uh, just below uh, 3.8 on the on the amateur band scale. So some uh, AM uh, ham radio operators. I'm going to call this the end of uh, part one. Uh, before I do the alignment, I think I better look into getting some new string for the dials. It works fine, but I don't know, it seems to slip a little bit at the ends, and it actually I got it to jump off one of the rollers at one point. I lubricated some of the shafts and it stopped doing that, but I got it to jump off once, and I think to do this right, I think I should uh, look into getting some dial string. I found a video online on how to do it. I'll refresh my uh, memory with that, and uh, then I would do the alignment. Because I uh, wouldn't want to do it first and then risk having the, uh, the indicator be off. And then have to do it again. <laughs> so I'll call this the end of part one. And uh, I'll order some string, restring it for part two, and then align it for part three. Thank you for watching. This is Paul, and my call sign is Alpha Alpha 1 Sierra Uniform.